it's Shell C from Paper Rock Geo Studio. And today I'm talking about watercolor again because in our Art Joy of Sharing Facebook group, our theme and challenge and mood board is all related to watercolor this month. Hashtag watercolor. And so today on the live stream show, I was so scattered. I had so many things I want to talk about. But basically it all came down to talking about different watercolor palettes that I have and what types they are, how much they cost, what type of watercolor they are, um, because this is kind of something that confuses people. And the whole thing that started my whole exploration of this today was that people wanted to hear about black watercolor paper. And I bought black watercolor paper, I don't know, last year, the year before, because I wanted to see what it was. Watercolor paper in general is a cotton rag paper with some type of a sizing that is treated in different ways, um, either pressed or not pressed, to make an absorbent paper for watercolor. And watercolor, it, the whole genre, the whole idea behind watercolor, it seems to me, is these layers of translucence, of layering one type of color over another with all of it being very um, see-through, which gives this, this it, you know, ethereal look to the art, right? And so when I bought the black watercolor paper, I said to myself, why is there black watercolor paper? Because if watercolor paint is translucent and you can see through it, what's going to happen on watercolor paper, you're not going to be able to see anything if it's black, right? Because it's just going to all look black. And that is what we're talking about today. The different types of paints out there and how they behave on different colors, whether it's white paper or black paper. I'm sure there's other colors of watercolor paper. I'm sure there's like maybe a tan and a ecru and I, I don't even know. I haven't really explored it that much. But I do know that I have different qualities of, of and weights of white, and then I do have this, this um, package of black. So I cut my papers into six by six, and I started out, uh, I wanted to do this, this one project that I was thinking about. So I started out doing this uh, background, um, doing some wash backgrounds, one on top of another, doing some splashes, uh, adding 91% alcohol to create splotches. And then in the end, I think maybe there's like four layers of color drying in between. In the last layer, I put salt crystals on there just to try to get a background that's really got a lot of different um, overlaying colors and interest from just putting one wash on top of another. Now this palette that I'm using on the left-hand side here is watercolor paint that is a, a higher level, not the most expensive paint, but nice watercolor paint. And there's different brands in there. There's some Daniel Smith, some M. Graham. Um, there is some Dale Rowney, I think. Or no, not Dale Rowney, but uh, Roy, uh, I don't know. Anyway, it's, it's a mixed palette. And we were talking today about making your own palette. Um, you know, buying an empty palette with little pans and having the tubes so that you can make whatever palette you want, right? Or just use it from the tubes if you want on, you know, so that you can have a mixing palette. But I didn't bring out any tubes today. I was just, um, well, I was talking about this palette, which is, is Arteza colors that I made myself. And, um, Oh, now we're getting into other stuff. But the first thing I did <laughs> was to make this layered background with translucent colors on some white. <coughs> and then I wanted to move to the black paper. And before I, and last night before the, before I needed some time to dry. So last night I used this wooden incredible nib and my new, uh, masking fluid, which is called Incredible White or something like that. They're both made by graphics. And I drew with masking fluid some fish on this six by six piece of, of black watercolor paper so that I could show you that there are watercolors out there that can be used on the black. And watercolor purists 
people who are only interested in this layering, washy effect of making an ethereal painting with watercolor might say this is not watercolor, right? But it is because it's a water-soluble medium in a pan, so it's watercolor. And what the what this one I'm using right now is is Japanese watercolors. They have their own palette of colors that are Japanese specific. You know, they, they have a lot of rules. <laughs> And I don't know what they are, so I can't tell you what they are. But what I have discovered, because I have this palette, which is a um, Gansey Tambi from Kurosaki. I have another palette, which is a travel uh, palette from Koi brand. And it is also Japanese watercolors. I have discovered that this type of watercolor paint is opaque, or almost all the way opaque. So... The whole idea of translucency is gone on these. It's not translucent. It can be made more translucent by mixing more water, or it can be just used in a regular consistency. And it be and it's it's interesting. It has an interesting effect because you still get that variety and va and variegation of color because of the water content that you mix. But so it's not the same as acrylic. But yet, it's not exactly the same as that whole concept of watercolor that I think we all have. So, I also have this neon set that is handmade watercolor, and I was curious about it because it's not Japanese colors. It's one that somebody hand makes and sells on Etsy. And so I was curious about it, too, and it is pretty much opaque as well. So... People would say, okay, well, those are cheap watercolors because they have filler. That's what makes them opaque. They don't have a lot of pigment. They just have filler. Well, I don't think that's true in this case. That is true in some cases. If you get a very inexpensive paint, whether it's acrylic or watercolor, it will contain a lot of filler. That is the reason that if you pick up an acrylic paint that costs 98 cents at the Walmart, you will get a very opaque one stroke look right you paint a craft with that and you don't even usually have to do two coats because there's so much basically what's kind of like a plaster of paris in that type of inexpensive paint because they don't want to go for pigment that it's pigment is expensive that makes the difference right and the more more expensive the pigment the more expensive the paint so these are not terribly expensive they're mid-range some people would think maybe they're student grade I just think they're, that's the type of watercolor that they use in Japan. <laughs> it's Japanese watercolor. And it's not horribly expensive. So it's, it's a good investment if you like to have something opaque that has a one coat bright color without a lot of fussing. If, if you want to make an ethereal watercolor painting, you don't, you don't want to use this. You want to use something that's translucent, that you can create all these different colors and variations based on the washes that you put on top. If you want a bright color, you need to put more than one layer of this paint on there. So that's really what I was talking about today. It was a different types of paints. Now, I did have one palette which... Um, I used it, but I, did, I cut that part out. It's uh, the Arteza brand paint. And they call those, that box of 60 watercolors from Arteza brand, professional watercolor, right? But it's not very expensive. I would say that that is student grade because when I tested it, all the of the 24 colors that I had it put in my own palette, which I created a palette to do desert scapes, um, they were almost all opaque too. Also, my metallic, any of the metallic uh, watercolor paint that I have is also opaque. So really, the only translucent watercolor paint I even have is, is that one palette. Uh, well, actually, I actually have two palettes. I have another one that's all Daniel Smith. Um, I have a couple palettes that are that. And then, of course, my, my uh, new palettes, which are at work, very expensive, the schminky ones. Those are professional watercolor, too. But... I don't think you need to have the most expensive watercolor. I think I want the most expensive watercolor, but I don't think it's necessary if what you're doing is mixed media. If you love mixed media like I do, I think that you would be better served maybe to have something like this that's um, got 
oh, you know, got still got watercolor pro properties, but is more opaque in one coat of bright. Maybe there are palettes out there. There's a apparently a Paul, a Paul Rubens one that's really great. That's not expensive and has clear bright colors. Um, there's these different Japanese ones. And if you then want to get serious about watercolor, you might want to invest in more expensive ones. So I guess that was my my message for today. Um, now the next question you're going to ask in your head, well, why don't I just use acrylic? Well, you can use acrylic. I, I love acrylic inks and I love mixing them with water. And you get some of these same washy effects with acrylic ink and water and it's permanent. This is not permanent. So maybe you don't even want to mess with watercolor at all. But I think that when you buy a palette like this, you get a lot of colors for not a very big price and you can mix it with your other media. So what I did on this one is remember we just did that washy um, multiple layer background. And then I took a water soluble pencil, which was a orange color of the Stabilo All pencil. And I looked for shapes that I could in my imagination think were something. And I'm kind of in a floral mood because I wish spring would show up. I'm tired of uh, winter. So I saw flowers in this. Um, some people like to do this with alcohol ink, uh, putting it on a non-porous surface and letting it create all these shapes. But I was just showing you can absolutely do it with watercolor too. And it's, it gives a different effect because it's, it's not as bright and it's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's interesting, it has a lot of texture. So the paint I'm using to put, to um, omit, this is what I call an omission painting, to omit the background so that the shapes that I found come more forward are this Japanese white because it's, it's opaque. So now I'm removing the masking fluid, the frisket that I put on last night to uh, and let it dry so that you can see how this came out. Um, I first was removing it with some tape and I discovered that with this black paper, the, some of the pigment was laying on top and did not um, absorb down into the paper. So I was actually removing some of the pigment uh, when I was taking the tape off. So instead I switched to just removing it with my finger. Another thing that I noticed is that the Japanese colors, the Gansey Tambis, uh, have a shim have a shine to them. They're not flat, but the neon ones that I used in combination with them are flat. So definitely two different formulations going on there. And um, I thought it was interesting. I'm going to make that into a card. I might actually turn it mixed media by adding some Posca pin to that card and maybe making some of the some white, probably white Posca pin to make some of the things really jump out. Um, highlights probably, but I'm not, I am not going to do that today, but I do need another birthday card. A lot of birthdays in my family, <laughs> this, this, uh, up, basically this upcoming week, like starting tomorrow. Um, so I need birthday cards. Um, so then to finish this up, I just came back in with that same, um, translucent type professional watercolor and just dropped in some color to make my shapes even seem like like more than they were to begin with. The shapes are obviously from the background, completely random. But then um, just you know, adding in a little green on the leaves, adding uh, some color to the flowers, adding some color to the terracotta pot makes it seem uh, a little bit more interesting than if I had just left it. So that painting is all watercolor. I did use one water soluble pencil. Um, it's interesting. It's different than if I had done it with acrylic, which you've seen me do this with acrylic. In fact, I'll put a I card up on the right hand side so that you can watch a different video with the same technique um, using acrylic paint instead so you can get idea of what the difference is. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you have, remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question if you have one, if I didn't make sense today. I'm a little bit all over there today. <laughs> um, and of course, you can uh, subscribe if you haven't already, turn on your notification bells, and there's always an option for extra exclusive content if you join my membership, which is a little clicky button down there at the bottom. So that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>